Welcome to an off-season Sydney Kings update. Today we're going to be joined by some Sydney Kings that are playing outside of Sydney. Uh, sometimes it'll be outside in, within Australia, but today it's Europe and Athens. And we can bring you direct two of our stars standing by, Jason Kadee and Brad Newley. Boys, good to see you. You too, mate. Kalimera Philae. How are you? Good morning, Jeremy. Very good. Picking up some language there, Brad. Is that all you can say in Greek or have you picked up a few more words than that? I can say good afternoon and good night and thank you. Go on then. Kalispera, Kalinikta, Efaristo. And Jason would say, Excellent. Baragalo. Excellent. Absolute pros. Jason, uh, quiet there. Probably doesn't have as much experience there. Now, Jason, this is your first time playing in Europe. Uh, how's the uh, last few weeks been? Uh, yeah, good. Um, the last two weeks has been probably a bit easier than my first two weeks. I started to figure a few things out and get used to the lifestyle and just the change of everything. But uh, I'm really enjoying it. And obviously, having this bloke 45 minutes away definitely helps uh, the whole process. Doesn't help my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> Brad, you uh, obviously been a good host to Jace. Uh, he mentioned a couple of uh, teething problems there. Were you, did you help him out with the culture, or, or was it more the basketball that uh, you might have been advising him about? Oh, a bit of a combination of both. Uh, it's a different lifestyle over here. You, most of your training is at night time, so you have a lot of spare time during the day. So trying to keep himself occupied and those kind of things, and a little bit just explaining the way the basketball is. But he's played in international kind of basketball before, so. He's uh, got a good grasp of it and he's doing quite a good job. It's good to see you uh, helping each other out. Um, Brad, when you joined the Kings, you mentioned it would be a relief to play under English speaking conditions again. What's it been like slipping back into another language? Um, yeah, well, it's here in Greece is a little bit unique. They, they speak pretty good English and um, our head coach now actually studied uh in in the states so he's he's been coaching predominantly in english so i've been pretty lucky there but um you know at the end of the day the language of basketball kind of speaks for itself as i've always said and you know it is a bonus having that english speaking at home but at the same time there's probably things you do want to hear that you don't hear and there's things you don't want to hear that you don't have to so either way i'm um, happy being back here and playing and enjoying myself and Jason, now uh, what was those first two weeks like? You mentioned there was a couple of teething problems. Was that more the on court or the off court? And how have you managed to uh, work through them? Um, it was a bit of both. It wasn't really uh, a massive problem of just getting used to how it all worked. Um, the Greeks do things, I mean, in probably all of Europe, but Greece do things a little differently where they kind of just let you know the night before what's going on tomorrow and things like that, where I'm used to probably having a bit of a schedule and you understand what's going on, where you've got to be. So. For me, it was just getting used to where I was going and what I was doing more than anything. And then obviously understanding how it works with our coach speaks English kind of parts when he wants to. And uh, our assistant coach does most of the talk in English. So you really, it's weird how you're kind of watching the assistant coach more than the coach just to understand what's going on. So it was more just getting used to little things like that. And then once I started to work that out now, it's just uh, become part of how it works. Great. Now, both you team, both you guys' teams have had some pretty good success since you joined. Jason, in particular, your team was struggling a bit, but have, uh, is it right they've won two of their last three games since you've joined them? How's that been going? Yeah, good. Um, obviously, completely different positions of the layer between me and yours. Obviously, he's near the top end, and they're trying to fight out a playoff spot, and now my team's trying to stay in the first division. So, uh, different worlds in terms of that, but... Uh, Look, they'd lost, I think, six or seven games before I got here and we won two out of our last three. So, obviously, it's nice to come in and, I guess, have an impact, uh, whether that's solely because of me or a, a number of factors, I'm sure, comes into that. But uh, I've enjoyed it. It's been different and uh, it, it's, I'd say, nice to be two and one rather than 0 oh and three or something like that. So, it's been good so far. Now, both of you are taking on uh, differing roles with the new clubs. Obviously, when you join mid-season, you're probably not going to be a starter. You're going to have to contribute in other ways. Um, go to you, Brad. What's it been like uh, going back to that kind of um, impact player off the bench um, with AEK Athens so far? Yeah, it's been a bit of an adjustment for me. Um, I knew coming in the team, 
our team's outright third in Greece right now, and that's that's kind of the, what they're hoping to get. And uh, the team is kind of set in a place. So my whole role with the team now is just to try and have an impact and do things that others can't and do my best basically every week. So it's not as if I need to go out and score a heap of points or grab a heap of rebounds or assists. I just have to do little things that help the team. I'm in a situation where I've, I've played in Europe now for you know almost 10 years. So it's not like I'm trying to make a name for myself. I've just come in here to help Ike you know, do as well as we can and, and try and win the Greek championship. All right, guys, we might, might do a couple of questions from social media. Um, we've got one from Twitter at the hashtag AskBradJason. Um, Key and Kramer ask, how does the Greek league compare to the demands of the NBL, both physically and mentally? Maybe start with you, Jace. Um, tough question, just because in a way it's different worlds, but it's very much the same. I guess it's hard to compare the level because they do play a bit differently over here. It's a different... Uh, way of looking at it compared to in Australia. We like to get up and down where a lot of the stuff here is very much through play and through plays and, and very strategic. Uh, not that it's not in Australia once again. So look, I think it's very similar, but I just would say it's coached a bit differently in the fact that they like getting through offense and they, and they like being very, very strategic with how they do it. And um, But in terms of the physicality, it's once again, it's different. They're very you get away with certain Yeah, you can get away with a bit more here than you can in Australia and then in some ways you can you can do a lot more stuff with the uh, off the ball than you can in Australia so it's reft a bit differently which definitely changes this, the style of the game that's an interesting point now Brad do you want to pick that up on the refereeing well, what kind of little things might be a bit different there than uh, than here so yeah I think we you, you can't get away with the kind of the hands kind of stuff you can with at home you can wrestle a bit more off the ball push guys off whereas you can't really do that as much Back home. Um, one thing, the style of basketball, there's a lot less possessions in the Greek basketball game. In Australia, we like to get up and down and score, you know, anywhere up to 100 points some games. Whereas here, that, that rarely happens. I think we average about 65 or 68 points and we're, we're the third team in the league. So it's, it's completely opposite. And, um, you know, your spread of scoring is a bunch of guys scoring anywhere between seven to 14 points instead of having guys scoring up, you know, like up over 20, but Jason mentioned it on the weekend, but it's just different how the spread is. And um, from from the top of the ladder to the bottom, it, it differs a lot. But um, yeah, just there's a little little things you notice that are subtly different to the Australian style. Well, I'll go to a question from Facebook. Um, there's one question here from Julia Burrell. She says, uh, how do the crowds in Greece compare with Australia and are any of them as good as the atmosphere at some of the big games at Kudos Bank this season? I'll go first because our team's a bit different. It's it's weird how you think of uh, me being first to Europe. I always imagined you just hear about how loud the crowds are. But in actual fact, the crowds we get in Australia are unbelievable. Um, I, I, I was, us at Kudos, I, I, I'm actually more grateful now for the crowds we get because it's so unbelievable. We get a maximum of maybe a thousand people tops at our games. And I was saying to Newell's the other day, it's crazy the atmosphere they can make with a thousand people bringing in horns and drums the and police, things the like that. The police turn a blind eye to a few things at uh, Greek basketball yeah, games. Yeah, but it's, they, they create an atmosphere over here with a small amount of people with the horns and things like that. So that's what I was saying to Newell's when I got here after our game. I said, imagine if we had 10,000 people and thousand of them had horns blowing it would be crazy so uh look they're, they're very good but i think uh i may be underappreciated how great our crowds are in australia with the numbers we do get it it also differs too like we have a pretty big fan like yeah. ike has a we play in front of, we play at the old olympic stadium which i think fits about eighteen thousand, and we average like six to seven but we got uh, ike is attached to a football club and they have a, a big group of fans too and that, they make a lot of noise and um it's been it's been fun to play in front of them instead of just in Australia where it's kind of music here. It's just like fans with their chants and um, puffing away on cigarettes at the same time. You can't, you can't see half, half of the stand at times, but it's, it's a lot of fun to play in front of. Definitely sounds like a, a, a cultural experience. Um, another question on Facebook from Josh Shahal, a language barrier aside, What's the biggest difference you've encountered on the court? Um, maybe Jace. 
Um, I'd probably go with the officiating. Uh, for the simple fact, it's just ref completely different to Australia, the way they rule on the ball stuff, off the ball things. Um, it cha- it, it, it's, I think if you're a player at the home venue, maybe you will know better. There's a few games I've played. When you play at home, they actually ref a bit more to the home team. Like you get a bit of a home advantage, which is unheard of, I guess, in Australia. You don't really get that. But I definitely would say that the refs ref the game differently. And um, that's been one of the biggest things with it. Yeah, well, um, Brad, you've got a big mind. game tomorrow. Go on, Brad. Sorry, mate. Oh, with the rest, one thing I've noticed in Australia is you're actually, you're, people actually talk to the refs there. Over here, no one really, you don't really talk to them. They just ref the game, you know what I mean? Like they get abused by it, the fans and the coaches, but the players, there's no real massive interaction, you know what I mean? Whereas in Australia, you can hear uh, when you're watching Fox Sports, them actually talking to the players and stuff. That doesn't seem to happen as much. Well, anyway, even probably in my coaches. case because I don't speak Greek and the refs are Greek, so even coaches, even really. yeah, there's no real those conversations with coaches. They just don't really exist. They'll just the refs will be like, ah, that's, that's enough. enough. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, how do you think Coach Gaze would go uh, with that kind of uh, <laughs> referee interaction? Well, he actually has the same emotions as Greek. He coaches. has it. He's he's similar to Greek hands. Like, yeah. like, uses a lot of hands. And so I think he'd fit in that style. He would fit in. Excellent. We're nearly done, guys. Um, there's one fun, funny question on Facebook. Uh, it was the photo of you guys having uh, dinner. Uh, there's a question from Mia Murray saying, is the older man at the dinner table gaining more knowledge on how to cook on the spit? And has he done any research? Yeah, Mia Murray is my sister. <laughs> she, uh, um, yeah, the old man, his days are starting to be numbered over here. He'll be heading back on a plane soon, but he's been looking after us, being a bit of a private chef behind closed doors, and he's had a lot of fun, and I think he's picked up some new techniques using some oregano and those kind of products. Excellent. Uh, We'll leave you with one question each. Uh, Jace, you've just had a game, and Brad, you're about to have one. Jace, just tell us what the uh, the last game that uh, Kim has played was. How did that go? And how did you go? Uh, It was good. We played, uh, I think, the fifth-ranked team, uh, Colossus. Is it Colossus? And they're fighting to be in the top four. So for us, where we are, um, it was a massive win. And um, I could obviously feel it, but see how important that was to the people around the club. He was kissing babies and hugging presidents. <laughs> so bare, uh, ch- bare chest hugging everybody in the stands. <laughs> so no, look, it was cool. I mean, uh, it was a massive game for us and there's only five games left now. So... Any win's important to try and keep in the division. And it was nice to, I guess, um, have my best game here so far and, and contribute that way. It was, uh, it was, it was very nice to be part of it. And Brad, uh, do you want to give us a little preview for your game uh, coming up uh, tomorrow, your time? Yeah, tomorrow night we play Olympiakos, who is one of the most famous teams in Europe. They uh, feature Vasilis Spinoulis, or Kill Bill, as he's known over here, has one of, been one of the best players in the Euro, EuroLeague in the last 10 years. So they're, they're a very good team. Uh, they're currently second and we're third. It's one of those games where you just, you got nothing to lose. You just go in and give your all. And I think, you know, we have a chance. We've got a good veteran team. So we'll, we'll see how it plays out. And we're playing at home. So we have that little advantage too. So I'm sure it'll be a uh, good crowd in for a Monday. And we'll, uh, we'll see how we do. Excellent. Well, uh, we'll let you get some sleep, Brad and Jace. And um, thanks very much for joining us on the road. We'll join back again with you in a couple of weeks. Thanks for having us. Kalinita.